George, I understand that there's a new predictive model for workers' comp that Liberty Mutual is going to be announcing soon that is really going to help you identify early on those cases that are likely to be extraordinarily expensive unless the right intervention is done. We're, we're very excited about it um, because what we've really been able to do is, is integrate a lot of the things that we have uh, been doing over the last few years, taking the millions of lines of medical data coupling that with um, our research, uh, information from our research institute, uh, merging that with the expertise of our, our medical directors with evidence-based medicine. And we've taken all of that and we've put it together and we really have come up with something um, really unique in the, uh, in the ability to identify very early on claims that really have, um, and, and we've kind of moved away a little bit from the term predictive modeling because we really feel like it's, it's more around identifying claims that have an um, escalation risk associated with them. And uh, understanding when a claim might have all of the characteristics of one that might become an outlier or have other things come into play. If we, can, if we can understand that at 30 days as opposed to two years or three years, then really what it allows us to do is um, apply resources to it earlier on uh, so that we can have an impact. So it's really uh, not predicting necessarily that a claim is going to go bad because our strategy is really built around the premise that if we understand there's an escalation risk, we can actually mitigate that by, uh, by applying the resources and, and approaching it differently even as early as two weeks or three weeks into the claim, instead of waiting two, three years when it's really gone bad and, and really the ability to impact is really, um, it's, it's difficult at that point in time. And can you share some of the characteristics of those claims that are likely to escalate? To talk about a few of them, and our model uh, brings into, uh, into uh, practice or into place dozens of variables. But the things we know is that uh, things like uh, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, uh, uh, have, they've been things that the industry has known for a while have an impact on the severity of the claim. What we've been able to do is take those kind of variables and actually merge them with other things like employee motivation, um, uh, work environment, psychosocial factors, uh, yellow flags, red flags, put all those things in a model. And the key is that you have to capture the data around them. But all of those kinds of things that if you look at one claim when it comes in the door, you think it might be the same as, an, as, the, as another claim, but what makes it a different, different are the uh, interplay of all these variables together. So the, the key for us is the capture of the data. Now, you know, the, the first thing when you talk about modeling is understanding a claim that's going to escalate or have the potential to escalate is one thing, but the most important thing is what do you do about it? And uh, a lot of times, most of this information, if not all of it, existed in a claim file anyway. But the problem was an individual adjuster has multiple claims. Each claim has many, many variables associated with it, so the, the human mind just can't synthesize all of that information and do the processing in terms of what this variable related to this claim might have as an impact to that claim and how it might be different from the other claim. So the model takes care of that for us. It tells us, well, this variable is what's driving the escalation risk on this claim or these variables. And then what we, what we knew we had to, had to do is we then had to give guidance to our claim handlers to say, okay, this variable has an impact, but now this is what you do about it. These are the resources you need to apply to, cl to the claim in order to try to have an impact. And analyzing all that data with, all, with that many variables is obviously a huge technical under, technology undertaking. Did you have the technology in-house to analyze that data? Did you need to bring in new systems to do it? No, we, we did all of the modeling internally. Um, we, I mean, we, we had to build our own data warehouse for that because our model, uh, it, it's, it's composed of over 800,000 claims and over uh, 100 million lines of medical service items. So just the, I mean, uh, the, the terabytes of data that were used to build this model were massive 
Uh, and I mean, again, we had uh, multiple statisticians and actuaries working on this, the building of the model, the, you know, the, 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 the quantification and the validation uh, for months and months and months and hours and hours a day just dedicated to that effort. We can understand now within a month what it used to take us two years to understand. And that gives us a huge benefit and an advantage in terms of understanding how we can impact that claim. And with workers' comp in general, it's my understanding that for a long time the number of claims was declining, but the cost of, the, of each individual claim was rising. But I understand there's actually now there's, you're starting to see an uptick again in the number of claims. Is that, is that an accurate assessment of where the market is? Yeah, we, we still believe um, yeah, that exists for the most part. I mean, there's depending upon who you talk to and how recent their data is, some believe that uh, frequency is still down. We do believe frequency has started to go up in, in the workers' comp environment. And, and we've been able to... Um, to handle the severity increases over the last few years because of the frequency decline. But once the frequency uh, starts to tick up, then you really have a challenge because of the medical inflation uh, and uh, just what's going on in terms of um, um, the development of claims. And any, er any early analysis as to what's causing the, uh, the increase in frequency? Um, we would like to think that it has something to do with the economic recovery, more people getting back to work and so forth, but um, I think it's, it's probably a little bit subjective at this point, uh, what we believe, um, because there are other, there's other signs in the economy that you really don't see that would suggest that that's happening. And I understand you've been doing this for quite a while now. Yeah. Talk about the changes you've seen in the American workplace over that time, and, and has it become a fundamentally safer place? We've definitely seen it become safer, um, but you know some of the emerging trends that we see are starting to cause us other concerns, like the mobile workforce and and uh, you know people driving and talking on their cell phones, people walking and talking on their cell phones. Um, so things that, um, you know, the, the type of um, risk that we used to see many years ago, we've gotten better about those, about reducing slips and falls and things like that. But, you know, things like carpal tunnel, uh, repetitive trauma claims re remain a challenge for us, uh, particularly um, when more and more of what we do is tied to the computer. The other challenge for us, of course, is um, when you have an, an, an economic situation like we have right now where a lot of the work, a lot of the jobs that are being recovered are being done through uh, temporary employment agencies. Um, you know, managing return to work in that environment can be a little bit more challenging uh, because there might not be a job to go back to. And uh, so that, 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 that's changed over time. Um, you know, 20 years ago, you didn't see nearly as many temporary workers or uh, professional employment uh, organizations as you see now. But that's, a lot of businesses are a little bit careful about hiring permanent workers now because they don't know if the economy is recovering or if there's going to be a double dip. So what they might start with are temporary workers to start off with, and they're not trained. They're, they don't have the same level of expertise, safety knowledge, and so forth. And again, the return to work back to that job can be a challenge as well.